When you practice this technique, you will understand. Just try it in a simple way. Sit with a rose plant or any other small tree or plant. Just try to look at the object, look at the tree. Without bringing the name of the tree in your mind, without bringing the color of the tree in your mind, without bringing any other thoughts related to that tree in your mind, just look. It will be difficult because you never do this. You have never done this. Whenever you see a person, thoughts start flowing. Whenever you see an object, thoughts start flowing. Now Shiva is saying, look without allowing the thought flow, without allowing the inner chatter, without allowing your mind to move away from that object. He is saying, to experience the object as it is. If you look at a rose flower without creating the word rose, just simply looking, suddenly you will see the boundary of the rose slowly starts disappearing. You will intensely start feeling the same feeling which you are feeling inside this body with that body also. As long as you create word and separate that object, that body from this body, you will experience two vaita. When you do not create word and just experience some object, suddenly you will start realizing, you will start experiencing the same life intensity, energy which you are experiencing inside this skin, in that skin also. Inside this skin what you are experiencing, you will start experiencing in that skin also. That is what I call Advaita. If you create a word rose, you will not experience the life which you are experiencing inside this skin, in that skin. If you drop the word and relate with it in a very silent way, you will experience the same life, same vibration, same intensity which you are experiencing inside this skin, inside that skin also. That's what we call Advaita. That is what we call experience of oneness. Now Shiva is giving you the technique. Do not create a word. Do not feel, look at the boundary. Do not allow your mind to drift away. Just look some object. Try in your house. Just sit in front of a flower or a lamp, whatever you like. But I don't sit in front of me which you like. <laughs> because you will start thinking about it. You will start thinking who presented that, why you like that, why you are either attached or detached and all those things will start. Just sit with something. Do not judge. Do not calculate the utility value of that object. Do not allow your mind to drift away from that object. Just gaze. Shiva promises you will become enlightened. You may have a shock. How can I become enlightened? It's such a simple thing. It looks simple when you listen. When you practice, you will understand. Of course, it is not complicated. First thing, if I say meditation is simple, you think, oh, then how is going to do it? If I say it is very complicated, you say, oh, then I can't do it. <laughs> Both the way you have your 
reason we can play with our words. We can play with our words. Before doing itself, you want to have a plan whether it is going to be difficult or easy. If it is going to be easy, then I am easy going to help my problem. My problem is too big. If it is going to be difficult, then how can I do? I will not do. Already I have too many difficulties. The beautiful traditional song. Oh, it is so difficult to be a spiritual person. And Bhagavan Ramanash heard this song. He wrote a new song. No, no, it is so easy to achieve a great man. He says, to achieve something only you have to work. To achieve a great man, just keep quiet. I tell you, it is neither easy nor difficult. It is neither difficult nor easy. It is there already. It is already exists. It is there. Then how can we use the word? It is difficult and it is easy. You created many difficulties. Just relax on the idea it is difficult. That is enough. Maybe I can give you the idea it is very easy to encourage you. But even that idea is not true because it is neither easy nor difficult. See, if it is something to be done, then you can say it is difficult or easy. There is nothing to be done. Like how a child looks at some object. See, when a child looks at something, you can see his whole body will respond. Not just his head, his whole body will respond. Look at some object. Try this today in your house. Sit in front of some object in a very silent way. Look at that, just like how children kids look. For example, if you are sitting in front of a lamp, before learning the word lamp, how you have seen this? Look in the same way. There was a time you don't know the word lamp. That time, if you have seen this, how you have verbalized it? Naturally, you wouldn't have verbalized. You would have just sat gazing. Same way, sit and gaze. Suddenly, you will see you are experiencing the superconsciousness, the thoughtlessness, the silence in you. Do not Go to the unconscious to escape from problems. Go to superconscious if you want to really escape from problems. If you want peace, do not push your activities into unconscious. <laughs> Pull yourself to superconscious. Only that is going to give the final solution, the ultimate solution, the truth to your very light, to so your very being. So let you understand pushing your activities and plans to unconscious is not going to help. Raising yourself to the superconscious is only going to help. Tomorrow we will see the deeper level techniques. These three techniques are supposed to be done one after the other. Today try this simple technique in your house. Come back. Tomorrow we will see the deeper level techniques. So let these great truths and the technique help you and liberate you. Let you experience the Shiva consciousness. Let you achieve and radiate the eternal bliss. Thank you. Thank you.